Let's turn to 367. 367. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. Then I know the sins of birth be set on every hand. Doubt and fear and things of earth in vain to me are calling. None of these shall move me from you I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky. I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry. Oh, yes, I'm facing on the mountain from the bountiful supply for I am dwelling in you alone. Far below the storm of doubt upon the 
row number? 385. 385. <coughs> 
everybody here today. It's good to have Elder Charles with us, and we want to uh, you know, pay for him and his ministry, and as he tries to study and uh, preach to us and feed his feet, um, Lord's feet. And, uh, again, we're thankful that he's here with us today. I want to pay for um, Grandpa. It's good to see Sister Ruth Green here, and uh, Sister uh, Virginia. Um, I want to pay for Sister Joanne Carr, and um, Sister Wanda Dixon, has there been any update on her procedure? 
are kind of few today, but I'm certainly glad to be here. I love to come to Meadow Creek. It goes back a right long time, all the way back to 1968 when I first began to come over here and uh, time has passed by uh, very quickly. Uh, we 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 welcome everybody. We appreciate those who have come, and we hope those that are sick will soon be well again. I know down in Union County there's a bunch of uh, COVID cases down there. I I know of one church that um, has over 19 cases. They've been having camp during the summer and, and uh, they, they have over 19 there's quite a quite a few cases around but though we're few and far between if the good lord chooses to bless us he'll make up the difference won't he because that's always the most important thing who's present and if he's present then we got all we need. We'd be glad to have all the rest that we can, but we'll have all that we need <clears throat> if he's present. You have an opening hymn for us there, brother? Number 60. Number 60. What's more, we come before once more in blessings us. Oh, may our good be seen alone, nor worship through the past. 
Father, that we're not worthy at all to call upon thy great name, but we're thankful, Father, that thou hast told us to do so because of thy Son and that perfect righteousness which he hath wrought, we're able to approach unto thy throne of grace to find help in our time of need. We're so glad, Father, to come together from time to time, wherever it may be, to join our voices, our hearts together in praising thy great and matchless name. We're thankful to be here today, thankful that we're still alive on this side of the grave and thankful for the hope that we have beyond the grave in <clears throat> that eternity which thou hast revealed to us in thy word. We do humbly pray that thou wouldest visit us in a mighty way. We're not able within ourselves we're not strong enough we're not wise enough we can do nothing father without thee that would be a benefit to us and we do pray that thou would just fill this house and fill each heart and fill this little preacher that we might be able to look at thy word together, understand it together, rejoice in it, and leave this place today with a joyful heart that we've had communion with thee. And Father, we remember those whose names have been called who are sick. We know that there's much sickness. We know that there are those who are calling upon thy great name for thy blessings upon them. And we pray that thou wouldst visit them in their homes, in the hospitals, in the nursing homes, wherever they may be. <clears throat> and thou wouldst heal the sick, comfort the brokenhearted, and cause us, Father, to be able to rejoice in thy great salvation. Speak to our hearts. <clears throat> Give me words to say that will be a benefit to thy people this day. In Christ's holy name we beg. Amen. I imagine if I ask you uh, what is the great commandment that any one of you would be able to tell me, wouldn't you? What is the great commandment? 
I'm sure you've heard it. I'm sure you've probably heard it preached. And I'm sure that you've read it in the Bible. The great commandment. I would say the greatest commandment. Now, all of you know, I'm certain, that we have in the Bible, we have commandments. We have what is called the law that was given the nation of Israel on Mount Sinai through God's servant Moses. <clears throat> that included not, not just the Ten Commandments, but everything that would govern their lives, all the rules that they needed to follow was given there on Mount Sinai after they came out of Egypt. And when they saw what happened there on that mountain, the fire that burned, they heard the voice of God and they said to Moses, pray that he will not speak to us again. We, we can't bear it, but <clears throat> ask him to speak to you and you speak to us. We think we can bear that. So God did that and they replied, we will do whatever you tell us to do, whatever you command us, we'll do it. They made that vow, they made that promise, but they didn't obey it very good at all. The law was conditional. If they obeyed, they'd be blessed. If they did not obey, they would not be blessed. And finally, after about 1,500 years, God's covenant with that nation, the nation of Israel, ended. They were no more his chosen nation. But did, did you know that uh, the majority of God's people in the United States believe that Israel, Israel is still God's chosen nation? and that when Jesus comes back again, the second time that he's gonna set up a throne here on earth, he's going he, there in a rebuilt temple, there in Jerusalem, and that he along with the nation of Israel are going to rule the world for a thousand years. Most of God's people believe that. I have a nice lady that comes in and helps me a couple of hours each week on Monday and uh, she finished college and she really studies her Bible and uh, she always has questions for me and she just about has agreed with everything that I've said to her except about Israel. And she said, I still believe that Israel is a special nation. That's the reason when you have news about what's going on over there in Israel, what's going on in Palestine, or those nations round about them, everybody that believes that they're still God's chosen nation. They're very much interested in what's going over there, going on over there in, in Israel. That covenant ended and they were a type of the family of God in every nation, kindred, tongue, tongue, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, the nation of Israel was a type of that God has people all over this world in every nation 
in every nation. And in the 22nd chapter of Matthew's, in Matthew's gospel, in the 34th verse, when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, the Sadducees did not believe in spirits and they did not believe in a resurrection. Jesus, uh, and verse 36, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Which is the first one, the great one, the biggest one? Whatever we can say about it. Mainly because everything else is going to flow from that. Do you love God? Could you say, Yes, I do. How much do you love him? Would you say a little bit? Would you say, well, maybe more than that? Or would you say, I love him? with all of my heart, with all of my strength. I believe I could look in the mirror and see myself and say, I love the Lord with all of my heart. That is the great commandment. That's number one on the list. In verse 36, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? That was a commandment in the law, but it's still a great one, isn't it? Still a great one. As great as you could get in your life here on this earth. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, and with all of thy mind. Uh, you're not made up of several different parts. That came from Greek philosophy. That didn't come from God. When you see these words, with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind, you could just keep going, you know. Just keep going. When God created man, he created him whole. He created him whole. Jesus said, in verse 38, this is the first and great commandment. First on the list, and nothing will ever be greater. Nothing will ever be bigger. Nothing will ever be more important than that. And he says the second is like unto it. Now the reason that it's called the second is because there's got to be the first before there can possibly be a second. The second comes from the first. Not that the second is not great like the first, but it's got, there's got to be a start and the start is, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind, with all of thy strength, everything about you. That's the starting point. That's where all of us have to start. And loving our neighbor and loving
love and other things, all of that comes from that beginning. The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, and think about all the law that God gave to Moses and the children of Israel. The Old Testament is almost replete with it. Had to do with everything about their life. Of course, they never did obey it very well. Never did. Even from the beginning, they never did obey it very well. But God gave it to them. He gave it. And even the Apostle Paul, who really is the interpreter of the four Gospels with his 13 epistles, and maybe 14 if you include the book of Hebrews, he is the interpreter. God chose him for that purpose. Of the 27 books in the New Testament, he, we know he wrote 13 of them and maybe the book of Hebrews, which have been 14 of those 27 books as an interpreter, just like the, the New Testament interprets the Old Testament. The Old Testament would have little meaning to us as Gentiles if it were not for the New Testament interpreting the Old Testament for us. And Paul's 13 epistles interprets a lot in the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's the way God designed it in order for us to be able to understand it better. That's the way he designed it. But all the law and all the prophets, Jesus said, if you love God, if you love your neighbor, then you have fulfilled all the law and all the prophets. Remembering this, that the law was spiritual. I'm carnal, but the law is spiritual. Just like the gospel is spiritual, the law was spiritual. But there was never a law given which could give life. Never. But it was spiritual. And had the nation of Israel obeyed it, they would have been a blessed nation for about 1,500 years, but they didn't obey it. They didn't obey it very much of the time. But all the law and all the prophets would be fulfilled in those two commandments. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength, and whatever else you can think of doesn't mean you add another part to you. <clears throat> You're a person. You are a whole person. You're not parts. <clears throat> now, what does the Bible say about God? Says God is what? Somebody tell me. God is God is love. That's what he is. Now I wish I could tell you what love is, that I could I could define it. I could explain it. I wish I could, and I imagine you wished you could, 
but it's just beyond our explanation. It's so great, so wonderful that I cannot explain it and you cannot explain it. God is love. He is love. We're also told by the Apostle John that we love him because he first loved us. That's the reason we love him. We didn't start loving him. He, he already loved us if we belong to him. And we begin to love him and hopefully as we continue in this world to grow in the grace and knowledge of him, we will love him more. We will love him more. There is no greater attribute than love. And I'm sure every one of you probably said amen in your heart to that. There is nothing greater, no greater attribute than love. There are some people on this earth that you love. Now, I know we talk about we, a lot of times, we love this, we love that. I ate some chocolate cake last night. I loved it. That's what I usually say. I love chocolate cake. I should say like. And a lot of things that we talk about, we like. I like to do this, I like to do that, I like to go here, I like to go there. I like certain people. And a lot of times we say, I love those things. When we really ought to be saying, I like those things because there are some people here on earth that you'd give your life for if it would save theirs. Isn't that so? You love those people a lot more than I like. I love those people. And whatever I got, I I'll share with them whatever they need. I'll try to provide it. And if they're staying alive meant that I'd have to give my life to keep them alive. I'd give my life for them. You love people like that, don't you? Now you're getting to talk about love. We like a whole lot of things. And most of the time we say, well, I love this, I love that. But there are some that we dearly loved. And there's nothing that we wouldn't have done if we could if it would have saved their lives or even if it would make their lives <clears throat> a little bit better. No great an attribute. But again, I ask the question, how much do you love God? That's a big question, isn't it? And you may feel like, well, that isn't fair to ask. That just isn't fair. 
God knows how much I love him and that's the only thing that matters. He knows. If the people here on earth or especially your brothers and your sisters, if they don't know how much you love him, that doesn't matter that much because he knows that that isn't exactly true is it if you love god you're also going to love your neighbor aren't you and i think neighbor there refers more to god's family rather than just anybody in the world you show your love to God by how you show your love to one another. To one another, don't you? That's the way you show it. The beautiful, beautiful story in the Bible, and I want you to turn to the, if you have a, uh, a Bible with you to the seventh chapter of Luke, Luke's gospel. Here's a demonstration of some love that is kind of hard to imagine. Just kind of hard to imagine. I'm standing up here preaching to you. I don't know whether I love him that much or not. Wish I did. I wish I did. You remember this story. In verse 36 of chapter 7 of Luke, one of the Pharisees, the Pharisee didn't have too much love, I don't think. One of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. He invited him to come have a meal with him. And I'm sure that Pharisee thought, well, boy, this is a big deal, you know. And he wondered how much Jesus was going to appreciate it. This is going to be a big deal. One of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet or sat down to eat. And there were others that had been invited there. He was in the midst. The Lord Jesus was in the midst of several here. And behold, a woman in the city I know already you're feeling sorry for her, aren't you? A woman in the city, which was a sinner, she didn't have no reputation, probably was or had been a harlot, and people knew it. She just didn't have no reputation. She had not had it in the past and she she wasn't invited to this meal she just found out that the lord jesus christ was there i don't know how she found it out but she found it out and we're told and when she knew that jesus jesus sat at meat in the pharisee's house she brought an alabaster box of, of, of uh, ointment. Something I'm sure that smelled good, something that probably was costly. Here was this harlot who hadn't been invited into this Pharisee's house, found out that Jesus was there but she didn't come empty-handed. 
she brought an alabaster box of ointment to anoint. And I'll tell you what, she did a whole lot more anointing than just the head. Just the head. She stood at his feet. She didn't ask if she could come in. She didn't wait for anybody to say, get out or welcome. Just as soon as she got in the house, she lay down at his feet. <clears throat> and she began weeping and she wiped his feet with the hairs of, with the tears from her eyes and dried them with the hairs of her feet. This past Thursday night, there was a Friday night, there was communion time at Crooked Creek. Some of, some of you were there and we appreciated it. I was there. We, uh, we wash one another's feet. What did this woman do to Jesus? How did she wash his feet? She washed them with tears from her eyes. Uh, what kind of <coughs> love is that? And that ointment she put on his feet. <clears throat> no telling how she was able to get it, but she put it on his feet. <clears throat> she washed his feet with her tears. She wiped them with the hairs of her head and she kissed his feet. We felt last Friday night that we were doing pretty well to wash one another's feet. We felt like there was a lot of humility, a lot of love, I hope there was. It didn't compare to this, did it? Didn't compare to that. This woman had some deep love that I may never know, even though she maybe been a harlot in the past, had a bad reputation, <clears throat> but she had a love that I may not ever have. And when the Pharisee, which had invited him, saw what this woman had done, washed his feet with the tears, wiped them with the hair of her head, anointed his feet with that alabaster, <clears throat> and the Pharisee began to say, this man, if he were a prophet, not the son of God, but I might would recognize him as a prophet. If he were a prophet, then he would know what manner of woman this is that toucheth him. <laughs> This Pharisee really thought that this woman was not worthy to come into his house, not even to be in their presence. And he was thinking, and he didn't come out and say this, but he was thinking, if this man called Jesus knew what kind of woman this was, he'd never let her do that. 
But Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, as far as he had a name, didn't he? He had less of a name after Christ. <laughs> Told him what he had to tell him. His reputation, I'm certain, must have gone down. Jesus said, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And Simon says, Master, say on. I'm sure that Simon thought, well, he's going to say the same thing I did. And he's going to congratulate me. May, maybe if, if he got rid of this poor woman. I'm sure Simon had thoughts like that in his mind. He thought he was going to be congratulated. But Jesus said there were two creditors. Which had two debtors. One owed him 500 pence and the other 50. One owed 10 times more than the other did. One owed 50 pence, the other owed 500 pence. And when they had nothing to pay, like me and like you, I may have thought at one time that I had something to pay, but I was dead wrong. And you may have too. And there's a lot of people right now all over the United States that's telling people in their congregations what they've got to do in order to become a child of God. What they got to do. And the tragedy is that most of the people that hear it are going to believe it. They're going to believe it. But one owed 50 pence, the other owed 500 pence. And um, when they had nothing to pay, they could not pay anything. They had nothing to pay like me and like you if we understood it. He frankly... You know what frankly means? He teetotally forgave the debt for both of them. He frankly, he completely forgave them because they didn't have anything to pay it with. So he completely forgave them. Tell me therefore, Simon, which one of them is going to love him the most? Kind of like if I had a congregation, a full house here, and I were to ask how many believe that uh, the Lord has been so good to you. You owed so much and you had nothing to pay and he forgave it all. Wonder how many would just rejoice in that. Tell me therefore which of them will love him the most. Of course, you know already who Jesus was referring to in telling Simon, this Pharisee, this story. He said, you may think this woman here at my feet, she's such a great sinner. She owes 500 pence and she doesn't have anything to pay. You, Simon, you're a big shot Pharisee. You only owed 50 pence. But you didn't have nothing to pay either. You just don't know it. 
That's literally what he was saying to them. You just don't recognize it. That this poor woman does. The reason she's washing my feet with her tears and anointing me with this oil and shedding tears like she is always down at my feet is because she realized how much she owed and she didn't have nothing to pay. Didn't have nothing to pay. But Simon, the shape that you're in, you'll never know the love in your heart that this woman knows in hers. She loves you. <clears throat> Do you love him that much? It it may be it may not be a fair question. There may be some who would say, I, I don't know how to tell it. I don't know that much about the Bible. I, you know, I, I don't have the understanding that you have. If I had all those things, I probably would be able to say, well, I love him. I love him. I love him that much. I would be able to keep that great commandment. And I want to close this message by saying this. Even the children of God are not always going to agree on everything because we don't have the same minds. We don't have the same understanding. And I know that when we talk about the great commandment, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. I'm not going to agree on everything with all the other preachers. I'm not going to do it. And they're not going to agree with me. That would like be like saying, well, there's some that's got it, and there's some that ain't. You know, we ought not to have that kind of feeling. We ought to be able to love God enough that even if we don't agree with one another on everything, that we'll still love each other. Do you believe that? I believe it. If anybody tells me, well, you got to believe exactly what I believe, or I won't fellowship you, I won't love you, I don't think God is very well pleased with that. I mentioned uh, Friday night that at the communion service that there's no one of us that never has been. There isn't today and there won't be tomorrow. Not a one of us that knows everything in this book. Not a one. You never have and you never will. And I never have and I never will. And when we get to the point that you got to be just like this and you got to say it just like this and you got to be just like me to be a part of it. We've, we've, we've got into a bad attitude. 
We love him because he first loved us. And I believe that there's enough scripture that you know, that you've read, that you've heard preached about, that we ought to love one another because of the love that it has for me. I wish I knew it all. If I knew it all, I could just go around telling everybody, you know, this is the way it is. And I'm going to be laid out in a casket not too far from hence. And I didn't know it all. I won't know it all. I could have known Greek, which the New Testament was written in. I could have known Hebrew, which the Old Testament was written in. I could have known Aramaic, where Daniel, the prophet Daniel was written in. I could have studied all those languages. And still at the same time, I wouldn't know everything that there is in this book. How did John end his gospel? How did he end it? I know you know it. How did he end his gospel? If I had written everything that he said and did, what would it take? Why, well, the whole world, he said, couldn't contain it. And you mean that a few of us people here, we learn it all and we know it all and we're going to enforce it all when there's not one of us that has yet, nor will we ever understand everything in this book. But I can tell you this, and I believe I can say this and say, I know it. What is the great commandment? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, mind, soul, and strength, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. In other words, this book is fulfilled if we were able to do it, when we loved God that much and loved our neighbor in the same manner. Thank you for coming. I wish we'd have had more, but I'm glad to see all of you here today and hope that the Lord will use what we've had to say to be of some blessing to you. What number are we going to sing, brother? 373. 373. 373. If you're here today and you're not a member here at Meta Creek, uh, <clears throat> or not a member at any of our churches, I I I want to I want to say this to you that. Uh, you wouldn't find a better place. You remember when I started a while ago, I said, I love to come here and I do. I don't know of any better place to come than here at Meadow Creek. And if you're not a member of any of our churches and you believe that God's grace has been bestowed upon you, come and let it be known. and. Follow the Lord in baptism. Become a member here at Meadow Creek Church. We're going to sing number 373, a wonderful hymn. Sing anytime you're ready. 
God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my fortune and empty graves there to prove my Savior knew. Because he lives, I can say this tomorrow. Because he
have uh, this and a meeting next next weekend. Elder John Scott is to be with us Saturday for the fifth Sunday. We'll be having supper in the basement about six o'clock or maybe a little earlier. But uh, we invite everybody to come and be with us. We've got to have you. That'll be Saturday. That'll be Saturday evening, right? Saturday, Saturday evening. We will have service Sunday at uh, uh, I'm not sure who, who he might have invited, but anyway, we do plan to have service Sunday. 10.30. Yep, 10.30. Supper will be catered uh, Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon. Okay. What time will that be about? Five o'clock, maybe six, six, or oh, six. <clears throat> Is there a service tonight at Bear Creek? As far as I know, it's six o'clock. <clears throat> we'll have our Wednesday night Zoom meeting also. Yeah. Is that on Zoom? It is. Okay. Well, I promise to be over there at Pine Church on uh, next Sunday with Brother David. Uh, <clears throat> so I won't be here, but uh, uh, I believe that they're planning a, a fifth Sunday meeting at the Warrior Spring. Uh, isn't that right, Brother Tim? Well, I know they called me to see if I could come, and I've already promised to be at the uh, Pine Church. But, I believe they may be. Well, I, I'm not sure about that, so I don't want to misinform anybody. Any other announcements that need to be made? Brother Williams, would you dismiss us, please? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank thee for this day and we thank thee for, for thy guidance and, our, and thy many and countless blessings. And Father, we can certainly say that it is, it's been wonderful to be in thy house today and we thank thee for the message that this dear brother brought before us, Lord, and we, we pray that, that we would show a be abundance of love to to those around us. And Father, we ask that thou would go with us this week and guide us and keep us and may all that we say and do be to thy honor and glory. Until we meet again, we ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother, for coming. <clears throat>